This is the New Halen River in southwest Alaska. Each July, the New Halen is a stop through on a massive migration. A migration that brings hundreds of thousands of sockeye salmon from the Pacific Ocean up the Quijack River, through Iliamna Lake, the largest lake in Alaska, and into the inland waters of the New Halen River drainage, home to Lake Clark National Park and Preserve. It is a migration that over its course delivers critical nutrients to life at all levels of the food chain in and around the park, helping ensure the future of the Bristol Bay sockeye salmon fishery. This journey is a return for the sockeye. Born in the gravel of creeks, streams, and lakes throughout the New Halen River drainage, sockeye salmon leave these freshwater environments after a year or two to migrate hundreds of miles to the Pacific Ocean. Near the very end of their lives, they make this return trip, returning to the very same creeks, streams, and lakes where they were born, to spawn and then die back where their lives began. In a land where soils are nutrient poor, winters are cold, and the growing season is short, sockeye or red salmon are the ecological, cultural, and economic lifeblood of the region. The annual migration brings between 200,000 and 3 million fish to Lake Clark and its adjoining waters. Sockeye salmon are a food source for other fish, wildlife, and for people, having sustained the residents of the Lake Clark region as a primary subsistence food since prehistory. One of the primary reasons for the establishment of Lake Clark National Park and Preserve was to protect the watershed necessary for the perpetuation of the red salmon fishery in Bristol Bay. We're mandated by Congress to protect sockeye salmon for um, sockeye salmon and sockeye salmon habitat. It's in the enabling legislation for why the park was created. And also um, one of the other things under ANILCA in the park's creation was allowing for subsistence use. And so um, sockeye salmon are the primary subsistence um, resource used by locals, comprising up to 70% of the local subsistence diet. Given this mandate and the critical role sockeye salmon play in the region, Lake Clark National Park has monitored the annual run since 2000. Using towers erected on the riverbank at mile 22, fishery scientists count sockeye migrating up the New Halen River. Sockeye salmon, as they migrate up the river, they seek the path of least resistance. And so they migrate along the shoreline, and then they tend to go where the current's slower. And then they also migrate near the bottom where the current is slower. Where river mile 22 is, it's it's in the upper river, it's above all kind of obstacles to migration that could delay migration. And then also um, it is just a perfect migration corridor and fish just cruise right through. Our camp is located on the right bank and that's the right as you're facing downstream. So we have a tower on that side and a tower on the left bank. We can walk to the tower on the right bank, climb up, and we observe the salmon swimming upstream and we count the number coming up every 10 minutes. Then we, we go back to the dock and boat across to the other side of the river and walk to the tower over there, climb up, and observe the salmon swimming upstream on the left bank. And we just repeat that for the entire day. We are collecting data in uh, a method that has been used in the area since the 50s. And it's consistent from year to year, and so it's relative to itself. And so we have like same methodologies, same procedures, and we can kind of compare from year to year and look at how changes in um, abundance are occurring, but also like changes in run timing. And we're, since we're doing it in such kind of a systematic way, we can look at those um, trends objectively. This systematic approach to counting is only part of the story. Through sampling, radio tracking, and genetic analysis, park scientists have also learned about the sockeye salmon community in the New Halen River drainage and the diversity within it. I'd say we've learned like um, who we are using genetics. They're different than any other um, fish, sockeye salmon in the world. And we can pick that out in the ocean. You can pick out a fish and you can say these fish are coming from the Lake Clark drainage. 
Um, so we kind of know who we are and how that relates to other populations throughout the world. And then we've learned like when they migrate back and how they migrate back, where and when they spawn. We've learned um, what we are. So uh, like how big, how old, you know, what, what are the dominant life history strategies that are being uh, used by fish in this drainage. By building on previous efforts and collecting the same kinds of information over time, park scientists are able to track long-term population trends as well as trends in life history characteristics. And one of the places we've looked at is the Tizimina River where the University of Washington started monitoring in, I think, 1963. And so we have a data set from 1963 to present. It's discontinuous, but I think we have over 40 years of data. And what we've seen is a shift of uh, residence time in freshwater from generally two, fish spending like two years in freshwater to one year in freshwater in recent years. And that's likely caused by kind of a changing climate and warmer environment, um, increased growing potential, um, and reaching that kind of threshold size at a, at a younger age. While this work has provided a great deal of insight into the sockeye salmon community in and around Lake Clark, it also helps serve the subsistence communities that depend on these resources. We are collecting real-time data and we actually provide that data over the radio to local subsistence users. It goes back to uh, like why we're doing it and that is to make sure that we have like a healthy population that we're protecting a healthy population that can sustain itself over time and ultimately also to provide kind of for subsistence use of that resource. It's also more about like the relationships with people. You know, we're part of the community um, and they teach us as much as we teach them. And they're very warm and welcoming. And, you know, I, I like to see this as kind of like as a partnership into kind of better managing our resources kind of into the future.